recording going. And I'm just gonna check the Facebook for a second here. And then I'm gonna start in a couple minutes. All right, there we go. So one second, I'm gonna turn the lights down. It's really bright in here. All right, so if you are on it here tonight, and I know you're probably a little bit early, like me, I wanna know that you're here and how you're doing tonight. Hold on. There we go. And my sister's here. Hi, Audrey. I'm two minutes early. Imagine that. I am going to wait right till eight o'clock because I said that I would start at eight. And tonight, for some reason, I opened the chat room a little bit early and I wasn't even ready. But I did decide that I was going to go ahead um, and stream it to Facebook because I felt like there's a few people that are a little less familiar with the Zoom. And so um, for those people, they can go ahead and be on there. I like being on here because there are a handful of people who are not wanting to be on Facebook. So when I do the Facebook thing, it's great from the perspective that it's super easy for me um, and it interfaces with the Facebook platform so nicely, but for the people who aren't on Facebook, then they only get the recorded version. So I didn't think that was very inclusive. All right, so let's give it one more minute. Um, if you are on here tonight and you haven't checked in, please do so, I promise. I won't single you out. I'm having a hard time seeing my bottom panel on here, which just happens sometimes when you have, um, I think maybe, I don't know. So I can't see who else is on here tonight. Go matter. And now my dog wants to bark. Okay, so it's eight o'clock. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. If you are joining me now um, and you're on the Facebook page, that's great. If you want to be on the actual webinar, um, you need to go to your registration link. And if so, you can join on here and you ask me questions because I'm not actually um, following, oh my gosh. Hey, Kyle. The dog needs you. And that's called live. <laughs> okay, so first thing I want to say is it is day 40. And I always get so excited when I get to this point because it has not been lost on me how much actual work, uh, Mary, you laughing at me, how much work it actually takes to take on a program like this. I know that, yeah, my dog, um, I know that over time, uh, for the people who are repeating it, there are certain aspects of the program that get easier with time, but it always is a level of consciousness and intention, and it takes energy, and it takes money, and it takes in, um, you know, a whole lot of focus to be able to do this program and continue it for 40 days. You know, if you don't know this already, uh, this program was originally supposed to be a 30-day program, and I ran the first one as such. And the reason that I pushed it out to 40 days is because I really think it takes an, that much time to feel like the pieces of the puzzle, so to speak, are becoming um, more like your everyday habit. There are probably aspects of this, and this is what I think is really important when you are celebrating day 40, is to have some perspective on where you've come from. I know that there were people in this detox who never ate this way, who never had this level of intention around the kind of food that they prepared, who didn't know the kind of information that they know right now. And a couple weeks ago, if you stayed up on all the videos, I asked you if you hadn't already to pause and get really clear about what you want to define success as for this program. My idea of success, I know for a fact, is probably not what a lot of people think it is. My idea of success for this program is that you're lever leveraging 
your information, leveraging your effort, levering your, leveraging your outcome more than you ever did before the program started. So in other words, if you never did meal planning and you're now meal planning, I think that's absolutely huge. If you never were conscious of bulk cooking to make sure you're not just thinking about the meal you're eating, but the next meals that come after that, what a huge success that could be. I would also think that success would be things like not stepping on the scale. And I know that's come up on the Facebook page this week or just tuning in to how you're feeling as opposed to looking at a number on a scale or looking at what the short-term goal is for a program like this. If you know anything about me, I am a completely long endurance athlete. That's how I run my life all the time. I'm always looking far down the road and I play the long game constantly. And in practice as a chiropractor, it's been one of the things I think that has been helpful for me because I love short-term success. I love, I love when anyone does anything and they start to get the results they were looking for right away. But I think the real value is how does that look six months and eight months and a year down the road and two years down the road and five years down the road. I'm always thinking like that. How am I moving my body today that's going to give me the outcome that I want 20 years from now? Or how am I eating today in a way that's going to continue to make me feel the way I want to feel next year, in five years, when I'm retired, um, whatever that is. So I want you to go back and I want you, if you didn't do it, it's like, think about what is success for you? Because if success for you was to be perfect in this program, well, we all know that that's very difficult to achieve and nor should it be, in my own opinion, ever the benchmark for success in this program because that's not life. Success to me is having grace and gratitude for yourself. It is um, having an intention about how you want to live your life and having actions every single day that back up what you say you want. So when I go forward from here, I want to give you as much uh, information about what my holiday plan is, because I would love in terms of next steps for you to have a plan, not just for the holidays, but also for the next 60 days. So this is what it's going to look like for me. So my holiday plan is to stay focused on how I like to feel. And truth be known, this is my plan all the time. This is a really, really big part of what drives my actions is being super clear on how I want to feel. So especially at a time of year that has a tendency to be sometimes focused on difficult things. Uh, for some people, you are racing around from event to event, or you have way too many things scheduled, you're perhaps spending beyond your budget money, so you're feeling financially stressed, you're feeling stressed in terms of trying to fit in your work schedule with your home life, with some level of entertaining. It is a lot, especially if you just go at it with saying yes to everything. It becomes very difficult. But for me, um, I get really clear around the holidays about how I want to feel with my food and with my life. Um, I think practice has been great for me because I've got to watch people whose life feels quite chaotic and out of control. And it's really made me reflect on deciding how it is I want things to flow. So for the holidays, for me, I literally had an alarm that went off on November 15th that I set last year. And what it told me was, be really conscious about what you want to be doing this holiday season. And this came as a result of last year, not being as conscious as I like about the kinds of things that I'm going to say yes to, not just to do with food, but to do with lifestyle. And I felt like the holidays ran me last year. It was not my favorite feeling. And I came out of it feeling depleted. Um, I really, I didn't feel at all like how I like to feel. I am not doing that again this year. So this year, I made a very concerted effort with my lifestyle uh, to be in alignment with how I want to feel. And so for me, it meant not saying yes automatically that everything, to everything that came before me, but getting into the habit, habit of saying, can I get back to you tomorrow on that? So what I used to do or what I accidentally did last year is I would just look at my calendar on my phone and I go, oh yeah, December 12th, nothing on that day. And I would say yes to it. And then, you know, at some other point, someone would come up to me or I'd, you know, be lucky enough to have um, an offer to do something, or I would even maybe want to do something. And I would just look at that day and I'd say, yes. And what happened is when you looked at the totality of my entire holiday season, it was crazy out of control. 
Uh, and it was really, really difficult for me to say yes to the things that I habitually say yes to again, to make me feel the way I want to feel. So I'm on board. I know exactly what I'm doing this year. And I'm looking at the big picture of the whole month. And this is a season to me. It's not a day. So not everything has to be yet said yes to in the month of December. Um, I'm saying yes to the things that I know are important for me to say yes to right now. And I'm putting um, a pause in some of the other things and other things I'm just saying no to. And that's because I have a busy life. I just know this about myself. I have my kids. I have my business. I have the other people that I care and love about. And I don't want to jeopardize that. So in keeping with the spirit of really being clear on how I like to feel, that's the lifestyle perspective. But from a food perspective, I still carry on a lot of the same concepts 12 months of the year, but especially through the holidays. I know there's more eating out. I know there's more entertaining. If I'm entertaining, well, I stick to the principles. I always do. I still will have higher sugar options, but I fill my buffet table and my plates and you know the uh, everything that we have on the menu with the foods that are in direct alignment because when you as you know this when you choose the right ingredients and you prepare them with love and with intention and you have a great set of recipes this kind of lifestyle does create delicious food and i've never had anyone that doesn't like it and so uh one of the things that you're going to get from me this year is you're going to get the low sugar holiday baking guide which by the way, I think you know this already, there are not a ton of things that fit well in there, but I do have some things. And I, again, it comes down to the totality of your entire day, the entire, entire week, the entire month. There is definitely room for some of these higher sugar things, um, but you just wanna make sure that it's keeping in alignment with what you want. So I stay focused. I also say yes to what's in alignment for me. I also remind myself there are no off limit foods. Anytime I tell myself that something is a no, like I can't, there is, um, I think it's that Taurus stubborn side of me, it makes me want to have it. So I just simply don't even use that type of words with myself. I don't say things are off lim limit, I just make them choices. And that's something that Heather Denniston, Dr. Heather Denniston, really clearly pointed out to me at one time, and it has always stuck with me. It's that everything is simply a choice. So I like to make my choices in alignment. I also make a habit of starting the day the way I want my day to flow. So for me, that means that when I do decide to eat and I don't always break my fast by having breakfast right first thing in the morning, sometimes I'll stretch it a little later on in the day, which is really great for resetting your digestion and just also keeping your hormones the way they um, are supposed to be functioning and so on. So not always just eating to eat, but sometimes just following the cues of my body. And I know if I feel like I've been overeating, then I will try and stretch my fast a little bit farther into the day. And I will do that on and off throughout the holidays. It's one of my things that makes me feel better, not because I'm trying to diet or anything like that, but just simply not always eating, 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 eating. You can kind of get into this habitual habit, well, habit um, and it doesn't feel so great. So the starting the day the way I like to start my day is uh, things like having quiet and space and time to myself. It doesn't have to be a long time, but having 15 to 20 minutes, even a half an hour to myself before the house becomes alive with all sorts of movement is really awesome for me. Also, um, movement's a big part of my day. So it's not necessarily the first thing I do in the day, but it's something I do in the first part of my day whenever possible, because it influences all my choices for the rest of my day. When I've got my movement in, whether it's something as specific as the gym or an exercise class or a yoga class or what have you, or simply just doing my own little workout or doing a hike or a fast walk or something like that. It just changes the way I tend to nourish myself, the tends, it changes the type of conversation I have with myself, and it changes my choices for the rest of the day. So just that very thing, having a little bit more control over the first part of my day, especially in these days when everything gets really busy, makes a big difference for me. I have minimums for myself which means that at the very least, no matter what, even if I'm traveling, that I get my hydration in. So how easy is it for me to focus on something as simple as water? 
you know, two and a half liters a day, no matter what, makes a big difference. Because again, when you're dehydrated, you tend to mistake that for actually being hungry. So just keeping up my hydration level means that I'm staying true to myself in at least one of the ways. The other thing is I try and keep the healthy snacks plenty. So even if I'm traveling and I'm going to be doing some traveling through the month of December, I will make a habit of stopping at a grocery store or Whole Foods or something that is as close to an alignment as I like to eat and just make sure that I have some healthy fats and some healthy protein and some vegetables and stuff on hand for myself. That very thing makes a big difference for me so that, you know, for all the times that I'm not being entertained or going out for dinner and so on, I can just simply eat the way I want to eat. So for you, I would say this, focus on low sugar, my son's home. Hey, Ben, I'm doing a webinar, babe. You liking this one, Mary? This is what it means to have a business that sort of operates out of your home. Um, the dog barks, your kids come in. Soon the mailman will be coming because now the mail strikes over. All right. So for you, I would say focus on low sugar and whole foods, just like the program, right? When you stick to that, it's just easy because your body knows to do what to do with that kind of food. When you're eating a lot of chemicals or you're eating a lot of processed food, so to speak, your vitality level is going to drop down and that's going to get you into a state where you start craving those kinds of foods more and more and more. So I would definitely say, I do not think of myself as having deprivation over the holidays. I don't think it's depriving myself when I'm eating a way that makes me feel the way I want to eat. And it's just sort of a switch over time. There was probably a time when I thought eating well, so to speak, was a form of deprivation. I no longer think that. It's depriving me of the way I want to feel when I eat the kind of food that doesn't make me feel the way I feel, if that makes sense to anybody, okay? So going forward, I would love to see that you became extremely specific about deciding what is it that you consciously want to hold on to going forward. So yes, I eat grain-free the majority of the time. I eat dairy-free, except for a little bit of goat and sheep, cheese and feta, that kind of stuff. That was a very conscious decision for me. So I'm saying to you, can you be really conscious about what it is that you want to say yes to? You know, how much do you want to make these things a part of your lifestyle or don't you? So if you're really conscious to it, then it makes it easy for you to decide what you're always coming back to when you're making choices throughout your days, weeks, and months. So if you can just spend maybe even a couple of minutes tonight sitting down with a pen and paper and say, you know, what am I going to say yes to? Instead of just being like, oh, we'll just see how it goes. Decide for yourself. Are you going to go back to drinking pop or are you just done with that? Are you going to add in grains or is your rule going forward you're not? And that, you know, those few times when it ends up, it ends up. Or are you going to keep counting sugar grams because you found those are one of the things that helps you have great success or not? Deciding what you gave you success in this program. Remember when I talked about deconstructing your days, the good days and the not so good days so that you could get really clear on the things that are working for you and are making you feel the way you want to feel. Remember when we talked about that? So I would go back to that and say, if you know the kinds of things that were the biggest game changers for you, then those are the things I would get conscious about continuing to do. For example, meal planning. Was meal planning huge for you? Do you feel like that was one of the things that made the biggest difference for you? Then I would say, continue to meal plan. If bulk cooking was a game changer for you, then I would say the same thing. That would be one of the things that I would continue to really focus on going forward. You know, success leave, leaves clues. We've talked about this before. So if you abandon all the things that brought you success, even though the program's over, you're not going to have anything close to the same results. So I would encourage you to get really clear on the things that you thought were the things that made you the most success and decide consciously what things are you going to continue to hold on to, you're continued to going to work going forward in your lifestyle and so on. So for me, meal plan, oh, I'm not awesome about it. 
I definitely go back and forth with it. I would say I meal plan 50% of the month. That's me. Now, I do exactly the things I said that I do. I write it on my calendar. I have like this running commentary and everything else, but I can kind of wing it now. I've been doing this lifestyle for long enough. So meal planning, it changes things a bit, but it doesn't change things a ton. Um, I know the kinds of foods that I can routinely leave in my household and put in my grocery cart that allows me to cultivate the kind of meals going forward. And I think that just comes from doing it for so long. So maybe a couple of years ago or five years ago or longer, I would have said meal planning was one of my big game changers. It's not as big for me anymore. It might be the same for you. It might be different, but just be conscious to it. I don't need to count grams anymore but I'm always, always, always educating myself. That is the thing that's been the game changer for me. Still reading labels, still being aware, still picking up the things that I picked up before. Not every single time I grocery shop, things change. I mean, even in the few years that I've been running this program, you know, products change. They change the way they make products. I used to recommend certain uh, bars, certain genuine health bars. I don't recommend them anymore. They put more sugar in them. I wouldn't have known unless I kept picking up the ingredient label and reading the nutrition fact uh, label. That's a big one for me. Maybe it's partly because I just think it's interesting. I don't know. That's kind of the Cairo, you know, geek in me. But that is one of the things that I also do is I just continue to do that. So, um, for you, this is just going to take some conscious thought for you, for you to decide going forward what you want to do. So I hope that you find that helpful. I know that sounds almost um, like it's so simple. It's, it's ridiculous. And there's a part of me that feels silly saying that to you. But picking up a pen and writing on a piece of paper and just being crystal clear about what you're doing is one of the ways that helps you get clarity. It also means with the clarity, it means that when you feel off track, you know what to come back to. All right. So I am going to wrap this up very soon because I just really have nothing left to teach you. <laughs> I don't know that I have anything inspiring or anything to tell you. I feel like this has been the most incredible group of people. What I love about this is maybe it's the depth of the program, but so many of you have, so many of you who are especially repeat detoxers or some of the new detoxers who are down the line a little bit is there's been so much accountability to each other. There has been tons of support back and forth. I know we've had all sorts of things come up on the Facebook page that are um, really are the human part of life. And I love how each other has reminded each other what's important uh, supported each other. I have seen people who have never meal planned or actually never cooked, all of a sudden decide they love cooking. It's awesome. So I want to say congratulations on every, every, every level. I also want to tell you what's going ahead for me in the next year. Um, I am going to run this program two times next year. I am wavering. Love to know what your recommendations would be. I'm certainly going to run this program again in October. I was initially going to run it at the end of January. I'm not sure if the end of January is the best time to run it. I'm thinking, I know it's the January thing, but all of you have just finished the program. I think I'm thinking, and you can let me know, but if you decide you want to be a repeat detoxer, which by the way, if you're a first time detoxer, the second time that you do it and after that, the rate goes down to 79. So there is um, a lower opt-in for those people who just want to continue to gain more information and be part of the crew and stay true to how you want to feel. I love it. It really changes things for me. Um, but I'm thinking maybe I'll do the program in April. All right. I have other programs that are going to be coming out in 2019. I'm trying to fi figure out how this detox, I will still be running it. I love it. Um, but I'm going to try and figure out where it's going to fit in the mix. I do not want to make it a standalone program. I love leading the program. It really inspires me to be inspired so much by you. So I would love to, for you to pop on the Facebook page or send me a note. Tell me what you think. And I will be sending you two things. I will be sending you a survey because I'd love to know what recipes you have used, which ones you like, which ones you're like, man, take it out. How much does it help you to have the meal plans there or does it? Do you, you know, what was helpful? Was it 
the webinars? Was it the Facebook lives? I'm going to be asking you all of those types of questions. Um, so I'm going to definitely be sending out a survey. And um, for those people who are interested in wanting to give me a testimonial, I would love to know um, two things. A, I would just love to know what you thought of the program. If you want to make that a testimonial, you certainly can. If you just want to personally tell me, I would love it. And that means feedback in all directions. So what you loved, what you didn't. So whether you do the survey, you just let me know. Either one is fantastic. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I just want to tell you what a pleasure it has been for me. I always get a little bit emotional at this part of the program. I'm just so um, thankful, I would say, that you would say yes to something that I put out there in the world and I put a tremendous amount of energy into it, but I feel the energy has come back to me a million times over. So thank you to everyone. Um, have a fantastic night and I want you to continue to check in. I'm going to keep all the links to all the videos open uh, and I'm also going to keep the Facebook page open until the next, next time that we run the program. All right. Have a great night, everybody. Talk to you soon.